My fellow Amazonians, uh, this is Dr. Cho Ayaba. I hope everyone is doing uh, good. I'm thankful for where we are and for what each and every one of us has been contributing towards our, our liberation. Ambazonia is free and shall never again be a plantation for those who don't have any respect for us. And I pray to God Almighty that we maintain our focus, our patience, and our defiance against one of Africa's last colonial outpost. The walk to freedom is extremely difficult, especially when you are liberating a country that has been under asphyxiation for so many years. Ours is not a political agitation for an adjustment into the colonial space. It's a complete decoupling from the colonial space. And it's going to be difficult. And I ask each and every one of you to be patient. And you must henceforth have a radical departure in mindset from the point where they could kill General Yeke and get his body from the Bialem into Meme and display it and our people are observing the body without taking action. We must move from the place where a man you called your president hailed him, shouted, put red, red carpets for him, is kidnapped, rendition, detained in communicado, tried and sentenced to life. And we did not pick up 20 gendarmes and hang them in the public square. There was no violent agitation. We must move from the place where our finest breeds were picked up from Calabar. The brave patriots would define the contours of this liberation struggle. They are bundled into the airplane of the enemy, shipped and detained in communicado under difficult circumstances. And you are not angry. You still think those who occupy Aso Rock are your friends, or somehow, you know, they will become your friends. The Irish, the, the IRA, dead the British. Every British armor car riding the street was stoned. Any Israeli car going through a Palestinian neighborhood, catapult, pebbles. You allow La Republique trucks to ride our streets. You waving. Forgetting the number of people they have buried alive. You must have a change in mindset. The things I do today, I did them many years before. In 2002, it took us two months to plan to take Cameroon's embassy in Bonn and led the charge. 2002 was just a year after September 11. Taking over an embassy was almost suicidal. 
we took it, changed the flag, raised ours. That's defying the odds. Changing your mindset. That's why I ask you before, are you ready? Are you an agitator or a liberator? You think if you simply agitate, Cameroon is going to adjust and you fit in, continue in servitude, forgetting the blood spilled for a higher objective for independence. You aren't angry enough. You're too accommodating. And you've bred leadership. That is sentimental. So it follows your cue. When you shout on social media, leadership adjust. Because they will turn around and come back to you and ask for money. My fellow people. You don't get up in the morning and declare independence and think you can walk home in the evening and adjust yourself under the colonial system. This is war. You will fight it to the bitter end and stay alive or you will lose your life in the process. It's not a joke. People's sons and daughters haven't been killed for nothing. This is a fight to the bitter end. Bush by bush, rooftop by rooftop, country Sunday by country Sunday. Take note. There is no retreat. There is no looking back. There is no raising of the white flag. So if you are contemplating adjusting within the colonial setup, pack fine. No La Republic colonial truck should be riding through your neighborhood. Every house should have stones, sticks, cutlasses, everything to throw at them. They must know they are in a hostile neighborhood. Every inch of our land must be a potential graveyard for the killers. All of you whether those still live in the maternity, are declared soldiers of the liberation of Amazonia. An arrogant alien state does not roll its tongue across our border. The same people we fed yesterday, still feeding today, and will forever be feeding. Take over your land. Institute its own system. Change your language. Appoint its governors and deals. You hog them. You feed them. You give them your land. You rent your houses to them. What kind of a people are you? My fellow Amazonians, in the past days, I've been briefed about a ban on the Santa Mbuda Road. I have, in many occasions, in many occasions, explained to you people, you must make a difference between agitators and liberators. When you have political agitators, you know, use audio messages, create television stations, and control your lives. You can understand why other political agitators sat in Yaoundé and rule you for 60 years. We have a lot of roads used by our people. Whether into Nigeria, whether into Cameroon. More than 25 years ago, we developed what we call the Boya Peace Initiative. It was developed on the basis that the occupation of Amazonia has altered a lot of things, has made us dependent, 
somehow on the colonial state. Our hydroelectricity power plant was dismantled and replaced with gas. Our airports were all shut down. We fly into the airport. And the Boya Peace Initiative was developed as a transitional accommodating measure on how we can continuously use some of their services as we build ours. In our war of liberation, we understand the difficulties that will be imposed by the occupier. My job as a leader is to lessen and not to increase the pain you feel. And if I have to, I will have to explain myself and to institute systems only when there are no alternatives that can do the job. We could get up and ban our people from traveling from Santa or from Mezam in general through La Republic. But we know the consequences on our people. Our farmers would depend on the sale of their produces across into Cameroon. You can stop trade, but you can regulate the actions along a particular highway. For example, we know where La Republic assembles its military trucks. We know how they move along the Santa Mbuda Road. We know you are aware that one of our units raided the Matazim. A few weeks ago, another special unit raided another convoy. There has been confrontation, surgical confrontation along that road on a regular basis. That is why most high-value targets are moved into our land heavily guarded, picked up from Buddha, driven into our territory because they know the consequences. That's how you fight a liberation war. You don't sit somewhere in the United States and use an audio message and ask people to stop moving across a particular highway. That's not the only route from Chang into Le Bialem. There is a particular market where most of the traders also come from Chang, which is La Republic du Cameroon. You have within a, 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 a buoy routes also used by traders. You have within Fako along the Tiko Meselele uh, Douala Highway. The reason why you find these men get up in the morning and constantly target Mezam, it's not because they want to impose a particular system that helped us towards independence. It's because they don't have control. They've lost control. And so they try to frighten you time and again to impose these draconian measures as a measure of their level of control to showcase it to individuals that they are dealing with, that they are in charge. They are not in charge. They aren't in charge. My fellow Ambazonians, I have told everyone, if you want to make an impact, I'm ground zero. The exercise of political control and power is backed by La Republic's military. If you want to under undermine political power, you have to undermine military power. That's the essence of arming ground zero. You've noticed in the past few days in Mezam, our forces have been on the offensive. Yesterday, La Republic forces were, which whom we had monitored for a couple of days, where they go and get drinking water. Our forces took them out. You saw our forces raided the, the, the home of General Lokobi and put him to shame. The other week, we raided Tinto moving special forces more than 50 kilometers. Soldiers walking long distances. The other week, you understand, we also raided, you know, La Republic 
in, 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 in this great state of mind. Our forces are on the offensive. That's how you liberate the homeland. Not some showcase political antics that imposes, you know, more hardship on our people. Fellow Ambazonians, I know there are many actors in our liberation space. And they are making huge contribution, you know, towards our liberation. But you must understand where power resides. You must understand who makes the best decisions that alter your lives in a positive way and undermine the ability of the enemy to impose itself on you. That comes from the office of Dr. Cho Ayaba. And I exercise that power in consultation with others who matter. I do that regularly. I consult on major policy decisions. Power is not arrogant. Power is not loud. Power comes with humility. The ability to use it in a way that affects the lives of people in a positive way. You, you might have read, I will be having a joint press conference with Namdi Kano. I didn't take this so seriously as most of you have. I didn't. And I was, I was shocked the way, I mean, people, the majority were happy. You know, the minority that has always been agitating. I mean, with spewing all forms of miniature explanations. <laughs> Suddenly, Nigeria is a friend. Asu Rock is a partner. We should not. Shake this lion that has been sitting quietly and waiting for us. We should not uh, agitate. We should not. The same kind of language you had when marauders from across the border maul our people in Boya with helicopter gunship. And they said you have to get 50,000 men trained, a country ready to provide you with guns before you rise up and storm the house in which... Uh, an intruder has taken your wife and kid hostage. Whatever we do must be for the best interest of Amazonia. And I put the best interest of Amazonia before anything. You have to continue to do your trade and move across the routes within our territory. Those in Manu using the Ekok Highway either into Nigeria or going down into Meme, you have to move freely until we will come to you and explain why there will be a temporal or permanent a halt. We know the reason why this useless ban has been imposed. It is imposed because there were rumors circulating that others were about to impose some conditions within Mezam. And so these agitators got up the next morning and were scared. They wanted to show they were in charge. They wanted to exploit your pain for their own political relevance. You must reject it. You must stand on your feet. And refuse to be manipulated by people who don't have your best interests at heart. If not of the Ambazonian Defense Forces and the well-trained Akamantos, Libyalem would have been lost Brave fighters in Fako who could never receive a weapon from these agitators rose up, put themselves together. Why they were burning, you know, a cop within Fako but didn't do their homework 
to provide to the forces the ability to enforce the ban. The forces valiantly together did their best and they've been doing so. You don't need these agitators. They don't speak for Ambazonia. They don't speak for Ambazonia. These are scavengers and infiltrators who have entered into our political space and caused more pain, embezzled millions, use our struggle as an experiment, claiming God ordained rights to lead without a single ability to shape policy that impact the presence of Cameroon in a negative way. My fellow Ambazonians, this is not a political campaign for power where people hug and kiss babies and show how nice they are. This is a liberation struggle against one of Africa's most brutal colonial systems. We must be serious and our population is part and parcel. This is not a struggle only for the Ambazonian Defense Forces, the Seven Qatars, the Mountain Lions, the Tabukwi Fons, and others. This is a collective struggle for our entire population. And we should not be allowing Cameroon military to enter into our neighborhoods. We must inform our forces. Don't rent your houses to the military of the occupier. Inform our forces. Don't enable in any way, form or shape their activities. You spy for them, that's a death penalty. You enable them, you will be declared persona non grata. Cameroon is the most brutal political system in the continent. The most arrogant too. But thank God for this generation. We have shamed them. We've humiliated them. We are on the move. The year 2021 is determining. From the 1st of January up till today, our forces have been on the offensive taking the battle to the enemy. We've devised and improved on our technology, on how, to, on how to destroy the ammo cars. We are building rockets. We are becoming more sophisticated, more organized. Our forces are more trained, more educated on why they fight. And leadership has changed from the conformist, pro-Western liberal system to engaging with partners with similar objectives to ensure we can hasten the day Cameroon's demise is announced. We don't make permanent friends. Those who bat for us, those who stand with us and by us, we will work with them. Those whose values are also consistent with ours. God bless you all.